Hey folks, welcome to Market Intraday Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. This video is sponsored by Realtik, the best trading platform I have ever traded with. Let's get into the charts here on this Wednesday, April 20th. As we get started today, we're going to take a look at the SPY, which is fading slightly off the highs of the day right now, but a monster rally is underway. I want to cover the basics of why this day is such a big up day in the markets. Number one, you have to look at the dollar. The dollar is getting crushed today across the board, and this is one of the main culprits of the move up today. Uh, the dollar is slightly off the lows of the day, which makes sense. You can see we just talked about how the markets have come off their highs of the day. The, mar the dollar obviously off the lows. The lower the dollar, the higher the market. In addition, the other catalyst to the update, not only is the dollar down and that's helping the markets to the upside, but earnings announcements were very solid, especially from Intel. Taking a look at Intel here, reporting much better than expected earnings, trading up about 6% on the day, or $1.30 to $21.15. Huge move there on Intel. And again, if you go to the charts on Intel, you can see what a powerful move to the upside that is. This is where Intel closed yesterday down around this support area. And it's gapping above all the key resistance lines. You have the 20 moving average, the 50 moving average, and the 200 moving average all to the upside here. And it's taken those out easily. Now, again, that's just one of the earnings announcements that was positive for tech. We also had VMware. VMW is the symbol there on this real tick chart. And again, you can see that's up about 10 and a half dollars on the day. And also a couple others here to look at. Yahoo! Blockbuster earnings, very impressive on Yahoo on this real tick chart here. And again, that stock is up about 76 cents. So across the board, technology really leading today. NASDAQ is up 49 points, which is a huge move for the NASDAQ. That's just under 2%. Dow is up sizably, but lagging percentage-wise. The NASDAQ up 166 points, and the S&P 500 is up about 15 and a half or 1.2%. So again, a positive day on this light volume trading day. Now, one thing I want to just touch on is you guys have to understand why after Monday, Monday's reversal, I went into this neutral to upside bias for the rest of the week. I mean, there's multiple reasons for it, but I want to cover them so you fully understand. Number one, it is a light volume week because you have the Passover holiday and this weekend the Easter holiday. A lot of children off from school, a lot of traders taking off and going on vacation with their, their kids, and that obviously will keep volume light. Remember, when volume is light, it generally pushes the markets to the upside. In addition, you factor in the weakness in the dollar, the good earnings announcements, and the market obviously heading north over the last couple days. Spiders, again, this is the intraday chart on my real tick uh, of the SPY. And you can clearly see here the gap up today was sizable. I mean, this is the biggest gap up we've probably had in quite some time. Again, we gapped up about 160 points. That's right where we're hovering now. In fact, let me put in a little bit of a support line and look at this, folks. Just as I put in this line at the opening lows of the first candle, look at what the spiders are hitting, and that is minor support. If we get through this level, you have another support level on the downside at 132.65, and then below that, another level at 132.35. After that, you'll deal with the 50 moving average. Again, the market seems to be in a tight range on the upper range of this chart, basically between the low here, which we currently sit at, at around 132.85 all the way to 133.40, and that's the range of the day. As you can see, initially we pushed up into the 10 o'clock time frame, faded, tried to move back up, although that did create a lower high there, which is slightly bearish, and off that light little bearish pivot high, uh, which was, again, lower than the initial high here, you have faded into gap window. And that's what this is called, folks. When you gap up, the low of that gap up is created or, or is called a gap window in the charts. All right, let's take a look at a couple other things. Obviously, the market on a light volume day, we've only done 86.5 million uh, on the SPY at this point in time. But what I want to do is go to a couple other charts to really dissect the move today. As I explained earlier, the dollar is a major culprit of the move up today. You can clearly see here. This is where the dollar closed yesterday, right here. And this is where the dollar opened today. So a major gap down. That's a very big gap down on the dollar. All right, so right away, you have to, anytime you hear dollar weaker, think right away markets should be up. Now, the other thing to just mention here as well, um, Monday, and just touching on Monday here, remember the dollar was up on Monday. What did the markets do on Monday? The markets were weak, right? Initially, we gapped lower, and we actually rallied back, but we still ended slightly lower on Monday. Tuesday, the dollar went slightly lower. You can see here gapping down and going sideways to lower. The markets were up a little bit yesterday, and today, Wednesday, the dollar's getting crushed, the markets are having a big rally. So I just want to prove to you guys, let you understand why the dollar or how the dollar really causes the markets to go in the opposite direction. It's all about weak, market, uh, weak dollar is good for the markets. Now, again, that's not necessarily good for consumers. 
understand the difference here. And this is a big divergence that the Federal Reserve seems to be ignoring. You have a weak dollar great for the indexes. It's great for stocks. Anyone who's invested is making good money as the market goes up on a weak dollar. However, the average American out there is now paying huge amounts for energy and huge, huge amounts for food. And that's really weighing on a lot of the, you know, the, the poorer Americans out there as they're spending most of their budgets on food and energy. So it's, it's kind of not necessarily a good thing, especially as the dollar loses its pricing power. Everything you go out and look for, even cars, cars are more expensive, food, anything that has a commodity involved in it, as we know cars are made out of metal and such, so they're going to be more expensive. Um, all of that stuff, price is going up, folks. And again, we're going to be paying it at the pump. We are already paying it at the pump, along with many, many other avenues. You go to the store, buy sugar, you buy flour, anything like that, corn. Price is, again, continuing to move higher, all right? So that's the dollar chart. And again, if we go to the daily dollar chart, I just want to touch base on this because you actually broke a support level down here. This was your most recent support at 21.40 to 25 on the UUP, which is uh, the ETF for the dollar here. And sure enough, we gapped below that area and have continued to move kind of in a weak area down to the downside here. And we are below that. My next support on the UUP daily is not until 21. So we do have a little bit more downside possible in the dollar in the short term. 21 will be good support. An even number of peers maybe to 20. 95 or so I may look for a long position in the dollar for a bounce but just look at this I mean look at this move to the downside you can see the lower highs here's a higher high lower high lower high lower high and latest lower high that's a downtrend that's telling you it's a downtrend and right now the dollar has just been heading south and the cost of all goods have been going up in that respect all right so that's the dollar today let's take a look at the oil chart the USO on my real tick software here uh, again you can see a nice move to the upside we cleared this resistance level which was your confirmation level again we got above here didn't confirm hit it here didn't confirm finally confirmed that means your first retrace which I called out as a long play right here on oil was a buy and sure enough you can see the move up since that buy alert and that continues to move higher we will be looking for a double top right here on the USO at approximately 4520 All right, and again right now a very very solid day on the USO silver just continues to be a powerhouse although silver has reversed at the SLV was up an amazing amount today. Amazing. It was up another dollar twenty. It has pulled back just up fifty cents and come into the fifty moving average intraday. This is your intraday chart of the SLV on my Realtik software. And just understand right here, the fifty moving average is obvious support. You're getting a bounce off of that. But what you're looking for on the SLV on silver is a reversal day. You're looking for the price of silver or the SLV, you can just follow that as a silver indicator, to reverse after having massive gains and actually close flat or even slightly negative, that would be a possible top in play. And again, notice the heavy volume that came in on the sell side. That's telling you that a hedge fund or institution is unloading right there. And you want to be aware, if that were to continue, it could be the top in silver in the short run. Now, ultimately, you probably end up going to $50 on silver, which is the 31-year high, uh, the max 50, really, high from 31 years ago but the point being here is at least this is my thought is that you probably don't get to fifty dollars before a correction happens because the institutions know that's going to be major resistance they're going to sell before that and once they sell uh, you only have the amateurs at that point buying and so my guess is it gets close to that level but doesn't quite hit it before it pulls back. A pullback on the SLV on the silver chart could be anywhere between 10 and 20 percent when it finally starts to see dumping. All right, and it looks like distribution may be going on today. Keep an eye on this chart. If it rallies all the way back to the highs, it should go higher tomorrow. If they actually close this thing maybe only up $0.10 cents or $0.15 cents or actually down 10 or $0.15, cents, then you may have a top in place and you may sell tomorrow. So it's kind of a give or take. We're really following this chart closely on the SLV. Let's take a look at the GLD. Now, the GLD here on Realtik, again, was much, much stronger but has weakened substantially. And you are seeing some selling in gold, so some selling in gold and silver going on. And this could be interesting, you know, this little interesting side note here, the selling over the last hour or two in gold and silver could be the fact that you also have people saying, you know what, things are looking better in the economy, I'm feeling a little better about things, I don't need to hold as much uh, silver and gold, which are kind of safety plays. Now granted, as long as the dollar's down, these commodities probably will have somewhat of a bid, but I think that might be the outlook on some investors right now. All right, let's take a look at a couple other stocks here. Chevron is having a big move, CVX, Chevron right here. Uh, a positive move all the way up to 108.34, a move back down here, a little bit off the highs. That's kind of following the silver and gold chart, which because it's a commodity-based you know, stock as well. Exxon's also having a big day, though, up $1.50, and that's actually staying very close to the highs of the day. Apple Computer has earnings tonight, guys. Watch this stock. It's going to be a big one. Um, you might ask yourself, well, how come Apple rallied all the way up here and kind of just stalled out in this upper range and is just going sideways? Well, part of it 
they're waiting for earnings, the announcement after the bell. I think it comes out around 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. But the chart on the daily actually tells you a better story. If you look at your daily chart, look at what you hit today at the high and what stalled out Apple. Right there, 50 moving average, right into that level. In addition, take a look at this. Take your pivot high and just stretch it through the previous highs and look at what you get. To connect it through that point to this point and that point. So you actually knew just by following the charts that Apple would probably get there and then stall out ahead of earnings into that resistance. And then who knows what happens on earnings. If they're great and it looks like growth is continuing to be strong, Apple could go back easily to the 360 level here, uh, back to the 52-week highs at around 365. If they're not as good, if margins are suffering, if you're looking like if it's looking like competitors are starting to take uh, market share away, Apple could easily head back to support, which would be actually right down here. This is a major support down here at around 325, 326. So watch Apple on earnings. Again, there were good earnings from most tech players yesterday. IBM, let's take a look quickly there. IBM was down a lot pre-market and yesterday after the bell, as much as four or five bucks. But today, uh, after a little bit of trading, it's rallied all the way back just down 41 cents. That's a good showing on IBM. Juniper also reported earnings. Initially, the stock dived on the open today to the downside and then reversed. This is one of the classic reversals. You don't see this very often uh, with such a hard sell-off in the first 20 minutes and then a reversal with such a, you know, a huge magnitude to the upside going to the positive side. But that's what happened today. Anyone who bought down in this range, very lucky to be a buyer down there on that reversal. All right. And last but not least, we'll quickly touch on Cree. Cree is weaker on earnings. They reported earnings. The stock has been hammered of late, as you can see. I mean, it's just kind of been floating lower as we are seeing some problems with this company, uh, one of the few tech companies that's not performing well on earnings today. All right. Let's go over a couple last little few things here. I just want to go back to the SPY and touch base here. Uh, the SPY on my Realtek charts, note how you are holding this gap window. Remember when I first started this video just about 10 minutes ago or so, we talked about the support area right here being a gap window this was going to be support and look at the little bit of a bounce you're getting so remember use technicals they will work they will give you the best percentage chance of winning your trading plays and your trading trades All right if you don't use technicals chances are you're going to be buying at the wrong point and selling at the wrong point or shorting at the wrong point and covering at the wrong point you got to use this in conjunction with a couple other key factors that you can find by taking the free trial at inthemoneystocks.com for the research center and the intraday stock chat it's a one week free trial Get it, take it, make money. It's that simple, folks. It's one week. If you can't make money in the research center in one week or in the chat room one week, then you're the one doing something wrong because everyone else is. Take care, guys. Have a great afternoon, great evening. See you soon.